So I just clicked continue to teeth moving to be able to create the proper virtual tooth setup. Okay, so now we could work to create our virtual tooth setup and we have a lot of great functionality that's visible on the right hand side. And just as a, an explanation, the settings are based on a lot of preferences settings that we have. Everything, if you want to change the default setting, everything can be changed there just so you know those options exist and we'll point them out as we go along. Right now, simply, if you wanted to move a particular tooth, you could click on the relevant tooth and you have the widget that becomes active. The widget allows you to pivot the tooth, turn the tooth, move it in any direction. However, before manipulating individual teeth, we have the ability, first of all, to select the relevant jaw where we would like to start off with, maxilla or mandible. We have the option of show opposing arch. So if I selected the maxilla, then the opposing arch obviously is the mandible. And now what we have is a curve that shows up above the teeth and we could click snap all teeth. So with a single click, the software will give us a proposed tooth positioning to start off with. We could review it, we could accept it, we cannot accept it. If you don't like it, simply click the undo button and you can manipulate the teeth manually. manually. But as an initial positioning, if you like, the, the setup the software proposes, what we see in terms of the numbers that show up here, these are our IPR settings. So we see that the IPR between these teeth is 0.1 millimeters, which seems to be a reasonable amount. And we have the default settings and tools, preferences, orthodontics, maximal allowed IPR for the anterior and then a separate setting for the posterior. So if you want to change those default settings, you could go ahead and do that. But otherwise, generally, there is no need to do that. So we have the curve. The curve could be moved up and down. You could change the curvature of the curve if you like, and then click snap all teeth, and the software will update that. Now, if there's a particular tooth or several teeth that you don't want updated from the snap to curve, you could click on the tooth to make it active with the widget, and then just click lock tooth. So now anytime you use snap to curve, the lock teeth will not move and will not snap. Obviously, if you want to unlock all teeth, you simply click unlock all teeth. So we just did that for the maxilla. If we wanted to snap the mandible to the curve, we click on mandible. I'm using the left mouse button to, to rotate here. Our normal mouse controls are, in, are active. The wheel of the mouse moves the model around. The left mouse button allows to rotate and the right zooms in and out. So again, here we have our curve and I could click snap all teeth. Okay, and here we got a message, unable to fit teeth on this curve under the specified IPR limits. So the software has snapped the teeth to the curve, but it's telling us that it wasn't able to do so without going over the maximum IPR limit. So our options are, we could position the teeth manually, we could change the curvature of the curve and re-snap, or if we want, we could change the maximum IPR if we feel that that is appropriate in the situation. And what we see the software doing is obviously it's coloring for us and highlighting in red the areas of the IPR and it's showing us the amount of IPR. So if we click on a, a tooth and if we modify the positioning of the tooth, we see the IPR changing in real time. We'll also see the spacing between the teeth if there's space created. And we also have the ability to turn on collisions. So if we want the software to show us any collisions that happen between the teeth or between the opposing arches, and we could turn on collisions. And as we go ahead and update the tooth positioning, we could see the relevant collisions. Any movement that we do make to a particular tooth, whether it's via snap to curve or manual adjustment, when we click on the particular tooth and make it active, we could see the tooth deviation chart here that shows us on the right hand side over here that shows us the, the amount of movement of the particular tooth. This is the total movement from the initial position to the desired position. If we want to see the actual initial position of the tooth or of the teeth, we could turn on initial position 
And what the software does is it shows us the initial model at the same time as showing us the virtual tooth setup. The vertical axis of the widget should be going through the midline of the tooth to allow proper control and placement. If for whatever reason it's not going through the middle of the tooth, we have the button here to refine midline. And if you go ahead and click on that, then you're able to reposition the widget on the tooth. So you can fine tune the placement and then unclick refine midline. You're able to select from the drop down menu if you're planning on creating aligners for monthly, bi weekly, or weekly. Why is that important? Because if we go to Tools Preferences, we have our tooth movement limits. Now, these again are the default settings. If you want to change them, you can change them. Generally, there's no need. But the limits are important because when the software is creating and calculating the number of models or the number of aligners necessary, it's based on the tooth movement maximum limits for each step. So those numbers are based on monthly limits. And if you go ahead and change it to bi-weekly, then the limits will divide by two and you'll end up with twice the number of models or aligners. And the same concept for weekly, again, the software will divide the limits and will generate the models steps accordingly. The last functionality that I wanted to point out on this panel is the Show Virtual Tooth checkbox. What this does is you could activate a particular tooth in the model and click Show Virtual Tooth. This will place a virtual tooth with roots to align to the actual tooth. We could fine tune the positioning of the virtual tooth by using the widget and we could see how that adjusts. Now once we have the virtual tooth positioned, then any time We'll unclick Adjust Position, here we go, and any time we pivot or move this tooth, then the virtual tooth will move as well. So this will give us an indication of how the teeth roots will move and adjust when we adjust the crown of the tooth. We could use the jaw transparency slider to be able to see through the jaw and see the root and see how the root moves with the tooth when we rotate with the widget. Once we have our final tooth set up, we could go ahead and click continue to edit steps.